Hello again. I'm going to go over a tutorial for a second page for the um, layout spread for the magazine. Um, there was a couple things I didn't cover in the last tutorial, so I'm going to go over those very quickly. And it's an opportunity to show you how to put on a full scale image onto your PDF. So, get it started. I've already opened up some of the images that I'm going to need for this particular layout. I have the the uh, blank. Um, template. I'm going to take that guide out of there. I have the um, nine up um, uh, picture frame and that's already flattened into a JPEG. I'll go over how to make um, insert pictures into this frame in a later tutorial. And I have this uh, beautiful picture of Kelly which I'm going to add to the final PDF. Um, we're going to start with this image. We're going to go ahead and select all to um, capture and select this entire image. We're going to go to edit to copy and then we're going to go into our blank template and hit on our um, artwork layer and we're going to hit edit to paste. And there we go, we've got a full scale image onto, um, onto our template. We're going to just move it over here to the left hand side of the spread and as you can see, it's just kind of off the center here of the um, page. It doesn't quite fill it all up, which is fine. I'm actually, uh, I want to fill that up, so I'm just going to increase the size of the picture by going to Edit, Transform to Scale. And I'm going to hold down the Shift key on my keyboard and grab a corner, and we're going to drag it to the upper right-hand side of the page up until we get to the center of the um, document. I'm going to go ahead and release my mouse, release the shift key, and go ahead and hit return to set the image at that size. Um, then I'm going to click and drag it down because I want to, um, I think I want to kind of crop it just at the tip of her head because I think it fills up the frame a little bit nicer. And then just about right there. I think that looks really good. Okay, now we're going to go get the um, picture frame. And we're going to click on that file, and we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to select all. We're going to hit edit, copy, or command C, and then click on our template and hit edit. Oops, sorry. We need to open. Um, oh, we're just going to do paste. I'm going to show you how it shows up on as a new layer. And then we're going to hit edit to paste, and a new layer pops up. And as you can see, the um, the image that I just imported is a larger than the um, document size because I made that frame at actual size. So first before we scale it down I'm going to name this file and call it 9up frame and hit enter. Okay. Now we're going to have to zoom out a little bit so hit the command minus key on your keyboard. You can also do that by going to win sorry, view to zoom out. You're going to have to hit, hit that a couple of times before you can get it as small as this. So what we're going to do is go, um, once you have, make sure we have this layer selected, sorry, we're going to go to edit, to transform, to scale. And I'm going to hold down my shift key, grab the bottom uh, right hand corner and drag it up to make it small enough to fit into our document. And I'm going to hit Command Plus to get the image back up to fill up the screen. I'm going to move the frame in here. I think I'm going to make it just a tad bit smaller. Maybe just a little bit more because I do want to put some text under there eventually. And then I'm going to hit Return. Okay. And as you can see, um, it's still just a little bit flat. Um, and I want to, you know, imagine that this is a wall and it's hanging on there, I want to put a little bit of a shadow. It just looks too flat, it doesn't differentiate itself from the background, so we're going to add a shadow to that. So I'm going to double click on the layer, I'm going to click on drop shadow, and I'm going to set the opacity at 35, the distance at 20, and the size at about 25. Okay, and you can see that the little, a little shadow appears there. If you want it a little bit darker, you can just bump it up, you know, until you see that it looks, you know, but as, as well as you want it to look. We're going to hit OK. And you can see that the effect is now attached to that layer. 
um, you can collapse that so you don't have to see it. It's unnecessary. And um, something that I didn't show you in the last tutorial, which I should have, you can change the color of this background. I have it set to a color that I thought works um, works good for me because it's a part of the color of my brand. I use like this, uh, it's called warm gray, but it kind of appears like a tan color and I have a darker version of this and then I have that um, kind of salmon-y tangerine color. But if you want to change it to say uh, like a white color of a magazine, which really when you look at it isn't truly a white color, it has like a slight grayish tint to it. So in, in order to see some of the highlights and shadows, we do want to make it not quite bright white. So I'm going to select probably 15% gray. And you'll see that, well, let me change this right here so you can actually see this little icon change. These are, shows you what two colors you have, foreground and background. Um, if you would use this as the white background, you can see right here, if I hit command, I think it's command delete, yeah, command delete, clicking on that background layer, it changes to white. If I hit Option Delete, it'll change it to back black. So you can see that those two colors, um, and you can switch them back and forth and to foreground a background color. Um, what I want to do though is select this light gray, and I'm going to put it back to white so you can see the difference here. I'm going to select this light gray, click on it, and then hit um, Command Delete. I'm sorry, Option Delete to fill it with the foreground color. You can see it make a slight shift in color. Um, if you wanted to change it to, I don't know, um, maybe like a, maybe a little bit of a yellow color, you can do that as well. Just select with a little eyedropper tool on your swatch palette and hit option delete. And it can change that background color to anything that you want. Now let's go back to this kind of a light gray color. All right. And, um, Let's see, what else do we want to do? Um, oh yeah, I want to include some text. Let's go back to the original. As you can see, I kind of labeled the headline here a portrait series because that's what I, I like to call this thing as a, a nine up portrait series. And I added a little bit of text here kind of describing what it is. So we're going to go into the magazine layout and we're going to type in using our type tool, the little T that's here on the tools palette. And we're going to um, click in uh, the right hand side of our spread and we're going to start typing portrait series. Okay, as you can see it's selecting that color that I had um, selected for the background. I'm going to go ahead and switch that to black for right now and I'm going to use my direct selection tool to move that text to the center of that um, side of the spread. And I don't think this might be just a little too big, so I want to select the text again. So you can either do a click the cursor and drag across the text, or click anywhere in the text and hit Command A. And we're going to go to the character palette, and we're going to change the size of the text. I think I might go down to about 24. I think that looks pretty good. I also want to change it. I'm going to put it into that um, salmon color. Good. And I'm going to select off the text. So there you go, we have a little headline. And then I want to put maybe a little description down here. So I'm going to select the text tool again, the type tool, the T, and select down here at the bottom of my screen. I'm going to start typing. Let's see, what did I, what did I call that? Okay, 9, 4 by 6 prints in 18 by 20 format. I actually should need to change that because it's actually a 17 by 20 format, which I went to the framing people and had them uh, work with me on that one. So uh, let's see. So a nine, four by six um, prints in. Okay. Oops. I'll go and select this again. Prints in a seventeen. 24 frame. And I'm going to select this direct selection tool to move the text over. I'm just eyeing in the center of the um, page right now, but I'll show you how to um, center everything in a moment. I will go ahead and select all this text because I want to change the color. Um, so we're going to go with this kind of gray thing that we have going right now. I'm going to select a darker gray color. Well, maybe a little bit there. And I'm going to make it a little smaller. 
put on 18 as well. And there we go, we have text and frame in a different color. Okay, and um, just to center it with this right now, what I wanna do is bring the guides over, put it about nine and a half, which will give me about an inch on from the center of the document to here, and then an inch on this side as well. Okay, and just gonna kinda eye it and center my frame in there. Oops, clicked the wrong thing. Select my nine up frame and just kind of center it in there, kind of eyeing it. And then I'm going to get the frame. I need to drag this layer down here because I need this text, that layer of the frame, and this text together in order to do this. I'm going to select, I'm do it. what I'm doing is holding down the shift key and just dragging, going directly to all three and selecting this last layer. So it gets all three. You can just click on it individually and be able to select it, but there's many, like I said, many ways to do things in Photoshop. So we're going to select all three of these and then I'm going to align them, align center. So they're centered with the frame, the text and the frame are centered. And I see that it might be just slightly off, so I'm just going to move it over a little bit as a group. Okay. And I believe that is it. I'm going to clear those guides and again when you have finished your document you think your design looks exactly the way you want it to um, just double check some things here I want to zoom in to make sure that my um, image is butting up to um, the center of that document it's good it looks good um, the highlights I think it might be a little too harsh I'm gonna bring that down a little bit you're down to 35 oh, Looks good, I like it. It's just a nice little sheen. And then um, the shadow, I think it needs to come bring it up a little bit. Maybe up to 65. I kind of like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll get back down to 60. You know, just subtle. All right. And at a center line shadow, um, it's already at 100%, so we're good with that. I could actually increase the size of that because. I think that just the pattern here is kind of interfering and it makes it look a little flat. I think it needs a little bit more dimension on it. So I can, let's see if I can kind of play with this when I move it over if it makes a difference in the effect. No, it doesn't. I'm going to go back into my um, history and unselect my last change. This is um, kind of easier to do than hitting Command Z to undo your last move. You can go into the history palette and go back to um, just a few spaces back. It doesn't. It, it's kind of limiting in this one, but if you made a few mistakes, you only did it um, rather than just one time back. You can go here. It looks like there's probably 15 different actions you can go back um, and just kind of correct yourself. But I'm going to go up to this um, clear guide section right here and start over again. Bring down the opacity of this highlight again, back down to 25. And um, just kind of, let's see, what was I gonna do? Oh yeah, I wanna make the shadow of this one, center line. This little shadow, I think I need to make it a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna go to edit, transform to scale. You can see that the little shadow I created is right there, but I wanna increase it on the side just a little bit to add some more depth. It just, it's a really subtle thing, but to me are the things that I notice that this image, that this side was looking a little flat and it didn't quite have that curvature of a page when it's in the, when it's opened up in a, in a magazine. So, um, I'm also going to make it a little bit darker, but I'm already at a hundred percent, but I can make the color darker. So I'm going to go to adjust to, um, uh, levels. I'm gonna see if I can make the image of that, that color just a slight bit darker. Let me move the levels over here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just gonna to try to increase the color just ever so slightly. I'm dragging it to the left because it makes things a little darker. It's just a really subtle move, but to me, I see a huge difference. Now, if I deleted it, look, it looks a little flat. I add it back in. You can see that at added dimension. 
Okay, I'm happy with this now. So I want to save what two versions, remember? We save one as a Photoshop file so that if we can go back and edit, add different colors, change out our pictures, change our text at any time. And then we don't want to save it um, over the template because we want to be able to use that template again. Um, so we're going to save it as a separate Photoshop file. So we're going to go ahead and do a save as. So go to file to save as. Command shift S if you're uh, keen on learning those keyboard shortcuts. And I'm going to go to the desktop and I'm going to go into um, my PDFs. And I'm going to make a new folder. And I'm going to call this my Photoshop file. And you can go ahead and call it whatever you want. I like to call it exactly what it is so that I know exactly what I'm looking for and um, how to find it. And I'm going to hit create and I have Photoshop file right there. It's selected as a Photoshop. Make sure you keep it selected as Photoshop, otherwise it may not save your layers if you collect, if you select, say, a JPEG. It will flatten everything right here, and we don't want that. This is the editable, editable file. So Photoshop uh, file format is selected. We are in our Photoshop uh, folder, and we're going to hit save and hit OK. All right, now we are going to flatten the layers, layer, flatten image. And then we're going to save as again. File, save as. And again, Command Shift S if you want to learn the keyboard shortcut. And we are going to save um, this as a PDF. So we're going to go back into PDF files. This is the port. I'm sorry, Photoshop file is a sub menu within my PDF um, folder. So you can organize it any way you want to. For me, um, the purposes of this tutorial, I'm saving it here. So I'm going to select the file format, which is Photoshop PDF. It is in my PDF section of the folder. Magazine layout, I want to change the name of this to Portrait Series page. All right. And we're going to hit Save. Of course, I just want to make sure I don't have anything already called Portrait Series in here. I do not. And I'm going to hit Save. Oh, I do have something called Portrait Series. We'll call it Portrait Series 2. All right. And hit Save. And again, you can add your own descriptions if you want to. I don't need to. It's not necessary for what I'm doing. I'm going to hit Save PDF. And that's it. We're done. And I'm going to go on to do the next tutorial. So have fun and be creative, everyone.